boys and girls, we're going to read some more of Wish Tree. This is chapter 10. When you stand still for over two centuries, while the world, the world whirls past, things happen. Mostly, by far and away, good things have been my lot in life. My leaves have cooled picnickers and proposers. Beneath my boughs, vows have been made, hearts mended. Nappers have napped, dreamers have dreamed. I've watched accents, I'm sorry, I've watched ascents attempted, listened to stories spun, and the laughter, always and forever laughter. But sometimes things happen that aren't so good. When they occur, I've learned that there's not much you can do except stand tall and reach deep. I have, for example, been hacked at, carved into, used for target practice. I have been underwatered, overpruned, fertilized and fussed over, ignored and neglected. I have been struck by lightning, battered by sleet. I have been threatened with axes, chainsaws, diseases and insects. I have tolerated the sharp claws of squirrels and the nagging pokes of woodpeckers. I have been climbed by cats and marked by dogs. I have my aches and pains like everyone. Last year, I had a mite infection that drove me nuts. Leaves blistered, sooty mold, oak wilt, leaf scorch. Been there, done that. Still, trees are luckier than people in one way. Only 1% 1 of a fully grown tree is actually alive at any one time. Most of me is made of wood cells that are no longer living. In many ways, that makes me tougher than you. So yes, I've seen a lot, and who knows? I may see much more. I could live to be 300, 500 even. It happens. Red oaks lead long lives, longer than our daintier friends, the black willows, persimmons, apples, and red buds. And yet, a few days after Samara's tearful wish, something happened that made me wonder if I'd finally witnessed too much. Chapter 11. The morning was budding and I was waiting for warmth. Down the street, a lanky boy was lingering near a stop sign. Head down, he was hunched over like a windblown weed. In his right hand was something shiny. A tool, maybe? Or a pen? He was smiling just a bit, as if he'd told himself a joke. A joke only he, perhaps, understood. All day long, I see people lost in thought, talking to themselves, grinning, frowning. He was nothing out of the ordinary. I was in the midst of a conversation with Bongo, who had just pointed out to me that I was a year older, 216 rings old, to be precise. Another sprout day, I said. I still feel like a sapling. You don't look a day over 150, Bongo replied. Best looking tree on the block. I'm really... I paused for comic effect. Getting up there. Bongo, who was perched on my lowest branch, sighed. A crow sigh is unmistakable, like a groan from a tiny, cranky old man. Tree humor, I explained, just in case Bongo had missed it. Although, of course, she hadn't. Bongo misses nothing, because, you know, I'm so tall. Really, Red, Bongo stretched, admired her lustrous blue-black wings. That's the best you got for me this morning? Maybe you'd appreciate my joke more if you weren't so sensitive about your stature, I teased. Covids don't give a flying tail feather about height, Bongo said. Smarts, wiles, trickery, cunning. That's what counts in our neck of the woods. Covids is a fancy name for birds like crows, ravens, jays, and magpies. Bongo says she's too classy for a label as common as crow. A soft wind tickled my branches. Spring, that old rascal, was teasing us with the promise of warmer days. The truth is, I said, it doesn't matter what size you are. We grow as we must grow, as our seeds decided long ago. Red, way too early in the morning for the wise old tree routine, Bongo gave me a gentle peck. Although you're right, it doesn't matter how tall you are. In a fluttery blur, she sailed to a telephone pole far above my leafy canopy. Not when you can fly, pal. At almost the same moment, Samar and the boy, who lived in the greenhouse, Stephen, stepped onto their porches. 
Both had backpacks. Both looked eager to greet the day. Their eyes met. Stephen nodded just a flicker, and Samar nodded back. Not a hello, exactly. Just an acknowledgement. Stephen ran off toward the elementary school down the street, but Samar hesitated. Hello, she called softly. Right on cue, Bongo replied. Hello, as she did every morning. Sounded just like Samar. Bongo can also do a passable tuba, an impressive chihuahua, and a fine police siren. Samar looked up at Bongo, grinned, and headed toward school. With that, Bongo let loose a hoarse and gleeful caw and set off to wait for children to arrive at school. She was a regular there. Everybody knew her. She enjoyed annoying the children, and they enjoyed letting her annoy them. Bongo especially liked to untie shoelaces while the children were busy retying them. She would snatch treats from their lunch bags. Every now and then, she would even make a polite request. She could say, Chip, please. No way, and you rock, when it served her purposes. Watching Bongo saw, I considered, not for the first time, my rambling roots. What would it be like to fly, to burrow, to swim, to gallop? Delightful, no doubt, sheer joy. And yet, I wouldn't trade a single rootlet for any of it. It is a great gift indeed to love who you are. Thank you guys. That's chapter 11 done. We'll be doing chapter 12 next.